criticised the timing of his first Australian lecture have done him an enormous favour. One opponent, the head of the Wesley Mission, says an anticipated attack on Christianity on Good Friday is scandalous. Many Muslims consider Ahmadi Dad to be the best Muslim apologist and debater of his time. Ahmadi Dad used to debate Christians in the 80s. Ahmadi Dad challenged the holy living God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are talking about 30 Five years ago, many of you know the devastating end of Ahmadidad. In the 80s, Dida debated a Christian apologist by the name of Josh McDowell. We actually believe that God set up Ahmadidad in that debate to embarrass him in front of many people. Among the crowd were hundreds of Muslims and Christians. In that debate, Ahmadi Dad made an embarrassing challenge that actually ended his career. There is not a single statement made by Jesus Christ that I was dead and I have come back from the dead. Jesus Christ never uttered that word that I have come back from the dead. I'm not sure that I heard myself that you said nowhere in the 27 books of the New Testament did Jesus ever say he was dead, dead and alive. May I read to you from the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. He said, I am the living one. I was dead and behold I am alive forevermore. Ahmadi Dad, as you heard, was defeated in this debate. Josh McDowell completely annihilated him by quoting the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18. And you heard Josh McDowell quoted Ahmadi Dad and asked him, Did you just say that nowhere in the 27 books of the New Testament where Jesus said, I was dead and I came to life? And you heard the response of the crowd when Josh McDowell quoted the book of Revelation 1.18. I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Glory to Jesus, the name above all names. He is risen and risen is he indeed. Hallelujah. Muslims. This is the end of your amazing hero, Ahmed Didad. As you see, when you're going to deceive hundreds, thousands and millions of Muslims, in the end you're going to get spanked and served for everybody to see. Thank you for watching. Download this video and spread it all over social media. Thank you for watching and God bless. Now to get to the point, as a defense counsel for the Jews, I could have had this case against the Jews dismissed in just two minutes in any court of law in any civilized country in the world. Simply by demanding from the prosecuting counsel the testimonies of these witnesses, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and it, when they are presented in the form of affidavits, sworn affidavits as we have them in the Gospels, I could say that these sworn affidavits, in their original, they are not attested. And the proof, you get any authorized King James Version of the Bible, and you will find it beginning each and every affidavit begins. 
the gospel according to St. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel according to St. Luke, the gospel according to St. John. I am asking, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what is this according, according, according? Do you know what it means? It means Matthew, Mark, Luke and John didn't sign their names. It is only assumed that these are their works. And as such, in any court of law, in any civilized country, they will be thrown out of court in just two minutes. country, one of the greatest legal minds that ever lived. The man that made in my country the varsity or university of Harvard famous was Dr. Simon Greenleaf, the great legal mind. He became a Christian through trying to refute Jesus Christ as the eternal word and the resurrection. Finally, after trying to do it, he came to the conclusion that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the best established events of history according to the laws of legal evidence administered in the courts of justice. C.S. Lewis, the literary genius of our age, men and women, the professor of medieval and renaissance literature at Oxford, a giant that no one could question his intellectual capabilities, became a believer in Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord when he tried to refute the reliability of the New Testament and he couldn't. And he said, I was one of the most reluctant converts, but I was brought to Jesus Christ because of my mind. Lord Caldegoat, the Lord Chief Justice of England, a man that held the highest offices that anyone could hold in the legal systems of England, said, as often as I have tried to examine the evidence for Christianity, I have come to believe it as a fact beyond dispute. Thomas Arnold, for 14 years the headmaster of a major varsity, a university. He is the author of the famous three-volume series on the history of Rome, an historian. He said, quote, I know of no one fact in the history of mankind which is by better and fuller evidence proven than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Dr. Bernard von Braun, the German scientist, the man that immigrated to my country and he created the American space program, said he never really became a scientist until he came to know Jesus Christ personally as Savior and God. The fifth fact that I discovered was the historical accuracy of the Christian Bible. The Christian New Testament is exceptional in its reliability and trustworthiness and survival down through history. In manuscript authority, a manuscript is a handwritten copy over against a printed copy. Men and women, of the Christian New Testament alone in history, there are more than 24,000 manuscripts, not versions, Mr. D. Dot, manuscripts, copies. Men and women, the number two book in all of history in manuscript authority and literature is Homer's Iliad with 643. The number two book in all of history in manuscript authority. Then Sir Frederick Kenyon, a man who is second to no one in the ability and the training to make authoritative statements about manuscripts of literature in history. The former curator of the British Museum said, the last foundation for any doubt that the scriptures have come down to us as they were written now have been removed. Both the authenticity and the general integrity of the books of the New Testament may now be regarded as finally established. The point, then there's some people 
who do not have an historical perspective of literature that will try to make an issue out of the fact that the writers of the four accounts of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, never signed their names. Please, men and women, we need to go back to history and see how they did it then. Now the implication of this crucifixion is this, that it is alleged that Jesus Christ was murdered by the Jews by means of crucifixion 2,000 years ago. And as such, the Jews are guilty of the murder of Jesus Christ. We Muslims are told that they are innocent because Christ was not killed nor was he crucified. And as such, I am given the brief by the Holy Quran to defend the Jews against the Christian charge. I am going to defend the Jews against this charge this afternoon, not because they are my cousins, but simply because justice must be done. We have our points of differences with the Jews, that is a different question altogether. This afternoon, I will try my very best to do justice to my cousins, the Jews. that I learned, the third fact, is I learned the third fact, is the Jews are not guilty of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. I was very surprised, Mr. D. Dot, that you needed to be the defender of the Jews. There are Muslims and Christians that get that distorted all through history. Jesus said in Matthew 20 verses 18 and 19, He said, We are going up to Jerusalem, and they will condemn me to death, and will deliver me over to the Gentiles to mock and whip and crucify him. Jesus said, I lay down my life. If anyone was guilty, Jesus was. He said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. Also, Mr. D. Dot, I feel that you and I both are responsible. Because the Bible says, please, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It was our sins that drove Jesus Christ to the cross. and breadth of the 27 books of the New Testament, there is not a single statement made by Jesus Christ that I was dead and I have come back from the dead. We have been beating, the Christian has been belaboring the word resurrection. Again and again by repetition, it is conveyed that it is proving a fact. You keep on seeing a man, the man is eating food, he says he was resurrected. He appears in the upper room, he was resurrected. Jesus Christ never uttered that word that I have come back from the dead. In the 27 books of the New Testament, not once. I'm not sure that I heard myself that you said nowhere in the 27 books of the New Testament did Jesus ever say he was dead, dead and alive? May I read to you from the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18? He said, I am the living one. I was dead and behold I am alive forevermore.
Good morning and welcome to Today on Saturday. I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Coming up soon on the program, we'll meet Sheikh Ahmed Didat, the Muslim missionary who chose Good Friday to deliver a message many Christians regard as an affront. First this morning to a story that has scandalised local church leaders this Easter weekend. Sheikh Ahmed Didat is a South African Muslim missionary who's in Australia to deliver a provocative message in his lecture, Easter, a Muslim Viewpoint. In a country that prides itself on the right to free speech, it is not the content of his lecture that's caused affront, it's the timing. Sheikh Didat delivered his speech on the most solemn day of the Christian calendar, Good Friday. Muslim, no eating, no drinking, no smithing, no smoking. So what a kind of life are you people leading? Is your God hungry for that? Is your God hungry for your prayers? Is he hungry for your fasting? He says no. Now he has a right. He has a right to say, look, there is an easy way. Can I ask you this? Are you expecting trouble on your visit to Australia? Because you, I notice you have two bodyguards in the studio here. No, I, this is the first time in my life. I don't know Australia. You know, this is, is a rough country or like the old cowboy days. I don't know. You know, the cowboys and cooks we see in films. I thought maybe this vast continent, please, please forgive me. <laughs> please forgive me. As Australia has enshrined in its democracy freedom of speech no, no, shape. I, I don't I think that... I don't know. I, see, I experience it very much. I appreciate it. But you know, you don't know, man, you don't know what's going on. Like when I go to America, the West, I don't know. There's a cowboys and cooks are still around you know, with, the, with the guns ready. <laughs> Even in the Quran, Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173, Surah Mahatha chapter 5 verse number 3, Surah Aram chapter 6 verse 145, Surah Nehal chapter 16 verse 115, Surah Ramat alaykum ul maithu duwad damu ala hamul kinzeel, Amma ahullah ali gherin labi. Forbid for you for food, ah, dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah has been worked.